Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. gentlemen of the radio audience, tonight's Fleischmann's Yeast Hour brings you a special program of music by Rudy Valley and his Connecticut Yankees, and marks the first appearance on this hour of those irrepressible comedians Olsen and Johnson. I am sure that members of their vaudeville and motion picture audiences from coast to coast, as well as their many personal friends, join Rudy Valley and myself in greeting Olsen and Johnson to this, the first of a series of Fleischmann Hours in which they will join Rudy in entertaining the Fleischman audience. This evening is there going to be plenty of chatter by two of the world's greatest comedians a little bit later. Furthermore, it seems to me a desecration to talk while the Connecticut Yankees are playing this beautiful composition till I wake.
this is Olsen <laughs> and Johnson <laughs> presenting the padded cell of the air. <laughs> Now is the sunshine of California. And the hospitality of Dixie. <laughs> the excitement of Chicago. <laughs> An audible feel from Detroit. <laughs> Last but not least, the sweetheart from Sigma Chi. And the moonlight beams on the girl of my dreams. She's a sweetheart of Sigma Chi. <laughs> and then we wouldn't care who was elected president because, after all, we are just those two little moth balls of insanity nestling in a hope chest of monkey business who are constantly spreading a fragrance of delirium as we play tiddly winks with air pockets and hopscotch with permanent wavelengths, which is being wafted to you from station A, E, I, O, U, <laughs> and sometimes W and Y. Now our cover charge is laughter <laughs> and applause. <laughs> Now this broadcast comes to you from our padded cell where we are making a futile attempt to find out why morning becomes strange interlude or life is just a bowl of green pastures. <laughs> What's that, Uncle Ollie? What's that? Oh, I, I, I bet that's a little calf that's crying for her mama. <laughs> what? I say, I bet that's a little calf that's crying for her mama. Oh, I'll bet it's a mama crying for its papa. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's a little baby bull bawling for its breakfast. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous how moo cows make milk? Well, how how do moo cows make milk? Don't you know how moo cows make milk? <laughs> no. Well, you take a little moo cow. You take a little moo cow. Then you fill the moo cow with alfalfa and water. You fill her with alfalfa and water. <laughs> and then you take her in a little barn. You take her in the barn. <laughs> she has a little barn. And then what do you do? And then you drain her crank, James. <laughs> More fun, more laughs, and more skulls crush. Well, pardon, pardon, pardon me if I am digressing. I beg your pardon. I say pardon me if I am digressing. Oh, that's all right. Just pull down the shade. <laughs> because, after all, we are two minds without a single thought. Two hearts. I'll double two hearts. I'll redouble. You know, we should have refused the penalty, but just then, a roar comes from the bleachers. <laughs> and the moon finally came over the mountain. Ah, make way for the little man on the horse. Make way for the little man on the horse. <laughs> hello, Squeaky, hello. Hello, fellas. How are hey, you, Squeaky? Hey, 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 did you know? What? Did you know, has, has Gooseberry got laid? What's that? I say, has, has Gooseberry got laid? <laughs> no, no. Well, then I must have swallowed the caterpillar. <laughs> hey, get out of here, get out of here. Oh, Uncle Oli, that's the funniest little man on the funniest little horse. What the? Funniest little Joe. Yes, and he, he's liable to drop in any time. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What's so funny? Oh, did I tell you about my operation? Your operation? Oh, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Yeah. The doctor put an outboard motor on my floating kidney. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, but Grandpa just dropped out of sight. He dropped out of sight? Well, well, well how, how was that? How was that? Yeah. Well, Grandpa and Grandma were on top of the Empire State Building. And you know it's 102 stories high? Yeah. <laughs> well, they were trying to see who could lean over the edges of furthest. <laughs> well, what happened? What happened? Yeah. Grandpa won. <laughs> <laughs> I, but where? Where is he now? I don't know. He isn't down yet. <laughs> but at the 79th floor, he waved to a friend of mine and said, everything was okay so far. <laughs> I know, but by, by the way, I, I heard you had an argument with your wife the other night. Did you hear about it? Yeah. Well, I was going to have my front seat taken out anyway. <laughs> I know, but listen, what, what made her mad? Oh, what made her... Let me tell you this. We were at a party, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> we were at a party. We were playing post office. Oh, she, she caught you playing post office? <laughs> yes, post office. Why, post office is a kid's game. It's what? I say post office is a kid's game. <laughs> Not the way I play it. <laughs> More fun, more laughs, and more skulls, right? Wait a minute, what's the what's the what's the trouble? What's the trouble of holy indigestion? No, I'm singing. Sing. <laughs> Peter can 
explaining already. Listen, Oli, be quiet or people won't like you. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry I annoyed the folks across the street because it's the folks upstairs I want to bother. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> That's my mistake, Uncle Oli. I thought it was the folks downstairs you were so at. Can you talk any louder? Sure, but my eyes might pop out. <laughs> well, then I'll sing. And when I sing, everybody claps their hands. Sure, they clap their hands. They clap their hands. <laughs> Over their ears. But nevertheless, Elmira, I shall sing. Play a D, die, zither. Confidentially, and between you and me, she was dressed in her gingham. And he and his spat. He said, you're the berry. She says, you're the cat. He says, will you kiss me? She coyly replied, I'd rather watch pickles float in on the tide. Uh, pickles, pickles, that isn't in the poem. <laughs> but it rhymes. Well, hold your tongue. What? I say, hold your tongue. <laughs> I can't. Well, why can't you? <laughs> Too slippery. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, nevertheless, a senator stood with voluminous facts and said, we must find something else we can tax. So they taxed everything and then even tried <laughs> to tax the dill pickles that float on the tide. Wait a minute. Why, why do you keep on harping on dill pickles? Oh, do I love dill pickles, Uncle Oli? Do I love dill pickles? <laughs> Isn't it a shame they're covered up with all those ugly little warts? Well, don't, don't you like those little warts? Oh, do I hate little warts? Do I hate little warts? Well, quit picking on those little warts. Because, after all, warts go with pickles. <laughs> sure, but pickles go with hamburger, but they still taste good with bologna. <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute. Here, here's the point. Warts are little health pockets oh, for the pickle. See, without a little health pocket, the pickle would disintegrate. You, you, you understand what disintegrate is, don't you? <laughs> this is a great joke, but they might laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> but never, 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 never laugh at little warts. Just think how long warts and pickles have been partners. What would this country do without the great American pickle? Oh, pickle. Don't toss pickle to me. Don't ever say pickle. I've got his grandfather out to my house right now. Who, who's grandfather? Pickle's grandfather. Uh, pickle's grandfather? Well, who, who's pickle's grandfather? <laughs> Cucumber. <laughs> yes, and we've had him there ever since he was a little gherkin, Uncle Oli. And guess who he voted for? I don't know. Who? <laughs> don't you know? No, who? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian, Brian, don't bring politics into this. Warts are to pickles like Sears are to Roebuck, like Rudy to Valley, like N to BC, <laughs> and like B to VD. And that's why a little dill pickle sailed out on the phone and wrote, Wifey, meet me when I get to Rome. The boat, it exploded. She grew old and died before the dill pickle came in on the tide. <laughs> So that's the reason we don't get butter from buttercups. And cottage cheese will never be a bungalow. And the lines can't bite you, they can't make you scream. You'll find that the milkweed will never give cream. But now that we're true, and now that we're tried, let's watch the dill pickle float in on the tide. Holy cheeky. <laughs> Oysters have no sex appeal. When two microbes met in a big cafeteria, one said, am I glad to see you bacteria? The other said, hi, Gene, let's go for a ride. <laughs> to watch the still pickle float in on the tide. I don't know why, but I threw away the lock and keys. 
my heart that is. Here are three of them, right off the press, rushed from the pens of their composers. My heart's at ease, the lady I love, and sheltered by the stars. to our original group of seven Connecticut Yankees, a trio of brass, that is, two trumpets and a trombone. 
There are orchestras that have larger teams of brass. However, among our three is a very rotund trumpet player who has turned composer for the moment to write and arrange this tune, which is also playing with it. He's called it, Why Don't You Get Lost? <laughs> Two waltzes which, not so many years ago, were the outstanding songs of that day. The sheet copy selling into the millions, Naughty Waltz and Missouri Waltz. I played both of them in my early days of saxophone work. Who can forget them? that is recommended for health by famous doctors all over the world. There she goes, out of that sizzling rocket full of joy.
singing. Nothing goes to Nutty Johnson, there's a guy for me. Now Nutty goes to Nutty Johnson, live up in the tree. All the monkeys in the zoo, when they saw them, said we're through. Now Nutty goes to Nutty Johnson, there's a guy for me. Now Nutty goes to Nutty Johnson, they just... What are you crying for? <laughs> oh, am I all upset, Uncle Ollie? <laughs> well, what happened? Oh, we had to shoot our poor little dog this morning. You had to shoot your poor old dog? He early this morning. Well, well, what was the matter? Was he was he mad? <laughs> what? I say, was he mad? <laughs> well, I don't think he was any too well pleased. <laughs> well, now, do, don't carry on so. You know, my grandmother just died, and I'm not weeping and wailing. <laughs> what did you say? My grandmother just died, and I'm not weeping and wailing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you didn't raise your grandmother from a pup. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you understand, you know, dogs are no good anyway. Their barking only keeps you awake nice. <laughs> oh, I've got a rabbit, and his barking never keeps me awake. Well, certainly not. Rabbits don't bark. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> what do you mean, they I, do? Oh, listen, I read in a book that rabbits can, can eat cabbage and bark. Well, now, listen, I, I wonder... You know what I was wondering? Yeah. I wonder why it is all little bunnies have shiny little noses. <laughs> I know why, Uncle Oli. I know why. <laughs> you know why little bunnies have shiny little sure. noses? Oh, why? <laughs> because their powder puff is on the other end. <laughs> oh, listen, you, you, you make the blood of my Spanish mother boil within me. What did you say? I said that you make the blood of my Spanish mother boil within me. Well, then the potatoes of your Irish father ought to be cooked by now. Oh, yeah, well, I, I suppose that you're the type that wants to grow up eventually and be a little bird that slithers around in the treetop. <laughs> I don't want to be a little bird that slithers around the treetop. Well, well, what do you want to be? <laughs> a big elephant to squirt water through my nose. <laughs> uh-huh. More laughs, more fun, and more skulls, Christ. <laughs> A happy hooey hour will now take the air. Good evening, little children of Radio Land. You are listening to Uncle Punch Fiddle conducting Olsen and Johnson's half hour of happy hooey for the little brats. Now, if you'll all gather around the loudspeaker and lay your slices of bread and jam upside down on the oriental rug in front of the radio, Uncle Punch Fiddle will tell you all about how to drive tacks in the grand piano and put ground glass on grandpa's oatmeal and all sorts of lovely games. But first... I want to read you a letter from little Willie Stickface of two, two and a half bunch grass terrace, who will be nine years old if the neighbors don't kill him before September. <clears throat> little Willie says that he has two trained fleas and a goldfish named Hector, and that they would like to join our Happy Hooey Club. Willie's father, a kind old gentleman named Hard-Headed Granite, has promised him two rifles, a machine gun, and a nice new shiny razor for his birthday. He says that the razor comes in so handy to put on the minister's chair instead of the old-fashioned sissy tag and is just the thing to cut the cat's tail off with. <laughs> and here is a letter from one of the charter members of the Brats Club named Layla Madbury Blumwhistle. Poor little Layla is a shut-in. Every now and then she shuts herself in the bathroom and they have to call the fire department to get her out. <laughs> little Layla supports her mother by selling steam shovels after school. And I know that whenever any of you little nitwits need a steam shovel, that you will remember little Layla. A cashier's check for $10,000 will bring you a shovel by slow freight, by air, by train, or otherwise. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 there goes the bell. Uncle Punch Fiddle must now say nighty-night. And I want you all to write to Uncle Punch Fiddle in care of Olsen. <laughs> and Johnson. And you will receive a picture of Uncle Punch Fiddle absolutely free. Just then... $14.80 to cover postage, wrapping, mailing, and amusement tax, and we will immediately forward something different to the wrong address. <clears throat> uh, oh, 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 will one of the studio attendants please stop the little fellow from crying? Will one of the studio attendants please stop the little fellow from crying? A uh, horse pistol by Colt. <laughs> we aim to please. <laughs> Let that be a lesson, Kitty. Ninety-nine. Ah, uh, here comes the little man on the horse. Here comes the little man on the horse. Hello, Squeaky. Hello, Squeaky. Hello there, fellas. Say, I say, I'd, 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 I'd like to recite a poem. You want to recite a poem? I'd like to recite a poem. <laughs> well, if you must, you must stand right over here where they can all get a good shot at you. <laughs> here goes. The baby elephant is sad. His life is dull and gray. He cannot suck his thumb. Because his nose is in the way. <laughs> hey, get out of here, get out no, of no, here. No, no, don't talk like that, Ollie. That's, don't, don't say that. That's that funny little man on that funny little horse with those funny little jokes. Hey, what's that? 
Here they come. It's they. It's them. It's those. It's those Connecticut Yankees. With Rudy, Sally, at the helm, Pontiac. <laughs> I hear of a drum. I love a parade. When I hear a band, I just want to stand and cheer as they come. The rat at the tat, the blare of a horn. The rat at the tat, a bright uniform. The sight of a drill will give me a thrill. A thrill of the skill of anything military. I love a parade. A handful of vets, a line of cadets, or any brigade. Oh, I love a parade. Have a heart 
like the one I'm offering you. Say that you love me too, cause I have a heart for you. Vanities of last season, beautifully sung in the show by Lillian Roth, have a heart. We surrounded by a new one, one of the finest that Milton Ager and Benny Davis have written in a long time. It's called The Sore Shame. I've heard your feelings fall for no rhyme or reason. Don't you know? That I was just teasing I'm so ashamed Please let me kiss away each tear Honest dear I'm so shadows fall let me forget the world and all tired is my heart the day is long would it were come to even song sing me to sleep your hand in mine our fingers as in a prayer and twine. Only your voice, love, let me hear singing to tell me you are near. Love
This is Olson <laughs> and Johnson in the padded cell of the year. More fun and more laughs and more skull toys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are including this song, Happy Birthday, not because Olsen and Johnson are making their first appearance on the Fleischmann Hour, but as a tribute to our honored guest tonight, a man who has celebrated his 95th birthday and whom we have invited here to witness his first broadcast. And we ask your indulgence while he sends a greeting to a radio audience for the first time. This way, Colonel. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the doorknob. Here's the microphone. <clears throat> My dear friends, this is a privilege and an honor. And in recognition of this occasion, I want to make public a little secret that I have had for a long, long time. To you, Rudy Valley, that admirable and brilliant young artist who has brought me many a delightful moment with your soothing melody. To you... I am bequeathing $50,000 in my last will and testament. Thank you very much, sir. I deeply appreciate it. And Thank to you. your boys, to your Connecticut Yankees, another $50,000 to be divided equally. Yay! And Graham, Graham McNamee, your colorful word pictures have brought the world to my elbow. To you will come another $50,000. Thousand dollars. That's wonderful of you, Colonel. Well, and to you, Ollie Olson, you, Chick Johnson. <laughs> yes, you with your gurgling laugh, your infectious fun, fun which has prolonged my life far beyond the coveted three score years and ten. I am leaving fifty thousand dollars apiece. Money to me at the age of ninety-five means nothing. If it brings you happiness, I am content. That is my message. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, I wonder if you would be so kind as to play me just one more melody. Anything you choose, gentlemen, play whatever is nearest your heart. Oh, but surely you have a favorite too. No, no, my boy. Just play me something that comes from your heart. I'll be glad when you're dead, you ran to do.
Ay, fue linda morena, lejos de ti. El alma tiene una pena porque al partir temo que tú olvides nuestro amor. Hermosa flor, mi alma cativaste con la fragancia de tu canto. Eres toda mi ilusión Eres mi dulce canción Adiós Me voy linda morena, me voy de aquí A llorar mi tristeza lejos de ti to us to find our belief that that very lovely rumba, Adios, was worthy of a prominent place in our program. It's indicated by the written and oral approval of many persons, chief among them, Miss Florence Reed, the famous actress. For her, especially this evening, we played Adios. <laughs> Fleischmann's East Hour will bring you a gala program of music by Rudy Valley and his Connecticut Yankees and further monkey business from Olsen <laughs> and Johnson. This is Graham McNamee speaking. Good night, all. What did he say? He said good night, all. You know, that means we gotta go. <laughs> yes, and when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> Have a Heart from the Vanities of 1931 was presented by special permission of the copyright owners. This is a national broadcasting company. <laughs>